Hundreds of you have been sending me woodworking TikToks for the past few months, and it's about time we test a few of them. Let's go. We've got five juicy ones for you here, and ranging from like 2 million views all the way up to 120 six million views. This is gonna get out of hand today. We're coming out the gate hot with 126 million views. Yes, one, two, six. That is a ridiculous amount of views. We've got this like insanely sharp chisel that is just so buttery cutting the top off an end grain piece of wood. I think I can sharpen some of my stuff up and give this a shot. Let's go. All right, first things first, he's using a Japanese style chisel, which has a hollow ground back here. I've got a pair of Japanese chisels. I typically use more of a traditional chisel, but we're gonna give it a shot with these Japanese chisels. I'm not gonna lie, don't really love this chisel, but we need to sharpen it first. To make this thing as close to a razor as I possibly can, I'm gonna use my diamond stones and a glass stone, then hop on my Tormek to do the bevel. I'll then use the Tormex stropping system to get it polished and hopefully it's sharp enough to cut us a sliver. Time for wood. In the video, he's using pine, so we're gonna do the same. And just... He got that nice single shaving. I think I'm too, I think I'm too deep to get a single shave. We're gonna come, have to try that again. Man, let me figure, hold on a second, hold on a second. That's too much. Okay, all right, let's try this again. This is crazy. Wow, crazy. Let's try it over here. The steel does not stay very sharp. I grabbed a different chisel. We're gonna try it with this one. A lot of it, I think, is about the start. Man, this is hard. How did he do it in one clean peel? The dude is, my goodness. First two chisels were a failure. Let's go with a timber frame chisel. Uh-oh. I just, maybe I'm gonna bring it up more, huh? I'm trying to do like a paper thin cut, but I wonder too how much the grain oriented. See it? Like you hear it racking against that grain. In the video, he's got a much, uh, I think it's a straighter grain piece. The more I'm trying this, the more I'm like, damn dude, whatever chisel that guy's using is on another planet of sharpness. And it's absolutely ridiculous. I wonder if I'm. It looked like he was using pine. He might be using like a cedar though. I will say, I suck, but this rules. 126 million views, worth every single one of them. On to the next. We've got at 7.8 million views, a leg being turned on the table saw. This is ridiculous. I've seen this done before by Michael Alm. He's got a plan available. I bought it, we're testing it. Michael's plan called for a bunch of stuff when I went to the depot. I grabbed a bunch of stuff. And then I also needed T-Track, which they don't have there, nor do I have any of it. So we're just gonna make my sled fixed. So we're gonna start with the tail stock, which will be the this, more or less. It's gonna just be a chunk of wood that's gonna hold the butt of the thing in place. I tried to do one, I suck. Let's try again. So we're gonna use one of these like threaded inserts that has a little grabbers on it. This is all the T-Track we have. It's just a, it's just a weird little T-Track. I need to create like a foot that can slide around so I can get the piece to go inside of it. What I'll do is I'll do a plywood plate, a couple holes in that sucker, just like Michael did it. And then we'll need a few pieces of wood. That'll do, pig. That'll do. So I think we're ready to actually maybe try and cut something. So I gotta find center on both sides of this blank here. Ready for a test. Insert that on the nail side and then enter piece. It's nuts. Ah! Too, too big. So I'm going to lap the corners off first. Do I think we might be close, my friend. So the next thing we're doing here, I'm gonna add the runner. I'm just gonna put some CA glue on this. It's a piece of maple, and then I can bring our jig over. And my stupid ass <laughs> up the wood, but that should be where we want it to go. Just let that CA glue set. I ain't sticking. You suck. There we go. I'm what you would call pretty puckered. I did everything I think I needed to do. Now there's nothing to it but to do it. We'll shut up and get to work. Who's ready to send it? There's nobody here. 
Here we go. Okay, it's working, but I'm having an, I can feel it binding. I need to extend my, my runner. One second. Let's try that again. I don't know what it is, but I'm having a lot of problems with the nut backing out. This doesn't want to stay in the hole, but it's so close. And it's terrifying, because I'm spinning it at the table saw. It's like when it's tight, it's good, but then it then it loosens up. We're so close. I think I figured it out. I put a little bit of a bigger nut on there. Gotta say, that's pretty rad. I don't know if it's something I'm insanely comfortable with, but like, this is pretty darn cool. That's pretty sick, I gotta say. Okay, that's enough of that for now. And that, my friends, is a perfect dowel on the table saw. Super cool. On to the next one. All right, this one's got 2.7 million views. It's from one of those like shared accounts, which I hate, but it looks pretty awesome. Let's see what this dude's up to. We've got a, a buttload of glue. Oh, a bunch of curve cuts. He's probably gonna create a little curvy curvy. Yep, there it is. Oh, and then it just magically turns into like two floor standing little ovular things. Why not? Let's make one. Okay, I have absolutely no clue what I'm doing here, but I've got about 60 good inches of what I think is elm. I don't know, it was in the pile. And I'm wondering if I can like kerf it into a box, which means I need four kerfs. So if I was to do something that was like, in a perfect world, if it's 60, I go 15, 15, 15, 15. But the problem is I wanna meet at a square spot here. I'll go seven and a half. I'm just, just by estimating on that, our boy probably has about a cut every quarter inch. So if we do something like that, maybe nine cuts, let's see how that bends. And then we'll come back and measure the rest. Now, if only I was as cool as the Dusty Lumber Company, I'd have a radial arm saw that could do all this, but I did buy one of those, didn't I? What I'm gonna do instead is use a miter saw here with a stop. I could do something similar. You just have to put this spacer block back here. So give her the old college try. Nothing to it but to shut up and work. I don't want to bend it all. I'm even deeper. She's probably done a test, but I'm a freaking asshole. Oh my goodness. I wonder if I should wet it. There's no way they're using solid wood on that. I think I gotta go deeper. Buddy, I gotta dig a little deeper. Hey! Hey! <laughs> Screw you, Sam! It's gonna look like absolute dog shit on the edge, but figure something out. How many did I do? 20, 21. I bet you I didn't have to do these last two over here. One, two. Mm. <laughs> I can get away with 20. 60 of them. Ready, set, go. So the piece started springing up and I'm an idiot and I wasn't putting down hard enough. So it actually cut through on like all of this. Complete bullshit. I still think we got a chance here. I can match it. Kind of cool. This piece here wanted to break off and then freaking tried to jump off the saw. Like the, the wood itself was cracked. I don't know about you. That's pretty cool. We're going for it. So that dude just like gobs and gobs and gobs of glue. And then he just kind of works it down into it. I need even more than that. Sides way off. Very, very interesting, my friend. Nice. So funky. It's probably why in the video he doesn't do two, he does one, because it's easier. I can try and use these. There's freaking glue on everything. It's like in my mouth. Let this thing sit overnight and see if it doesn't explode apart in the morning. I'm giving it an 85% chance that it does. 
So I let that thing dry overnight and it should be pretty good now, hopefully. But before we get into it, I wanna tell you about this week's sponsor, Rio Link. So I'm super pumped to finally be getting a security system in the shop. Rio Link has a ton of options out there and what I love the most about them is they have options that don't need hardwired that link directly to your phone. You can simply download the app and access your security cameras from anywhere. I am extremely excited about this because we need a lot of them. We've got their Rio Link Duo 2 Wi-Fi and the Arguous PT Ultras, which are gonna be inside and outside, and I'm super stoked about it. We can mount these directly to the building. Really simple to use. Come with a battery if you wanna take them off. You can plug it in and charge. We're gonna be using a solar panel on this one. So we can hook up these really rad solar panels with our units and get continuous power without ever changing batteries or having to worry about power outages. We need to be inside, we need to be outside, and running wires to those would have been an absolute pain in the butt. They have onboard storage as well as cloud storage, which is super cool. And I am really excited to be able to capture the moments on camera in the shop that we may or may not miss. Besides that, they're gonna keep my business safe and these things work awesome at home or at your shop. My buddy Johnny actually had a break-in at his building recently and I don't want that to happen here. So I'm super excited to get these real links up and installed. If you're interested in getting some more security around your shop or home, you definitely gotta check these out. They are fantastic and I'm really excited. Thank you really for sponsoring this video. Now, let's get back to it. Alrighty, it's been overnight. Moment of truth, Let's see if this sucker explodes apart. I will say, <laughs> that's pretty cool. That's super cool. It's interesting to say the least. You can probably make a thing? I don't know, I don't know. But I think for the intents and purposes of testing out viral crazy shit, I'll get the domino out. One well, benefit of a domino, it took three minutes. Ugly joints. It probably looks to the same quality as those things are usually built like by children in factories overseas. And some of those kids are master craftsmen. But this video, I don't know. This is definitely some of my worst work. I could put a one bottle of booze inside of it. I think it's the last five. Say what? Oh, you do? I think I'm gonna glue it up just to spite you. The only reason we're doing this is because Joe thinks it's a lost cause. Joe's our new camera guy. So I'm gonna prove him wrong, make it awesome. I can live with this, hunk of shit. It doesn't even look slightly above average. All right, we let it dry. I gotta go wash the glue off of my brand new Enron We Trust shirt that I've already sweat through. If you haven't grabbed yourself one, go ahead and do that down below. We got an awesome giveaway that you're gonna wanna check out going on as well right now. It's only available through the month of August, 2023, depending on when you're watching it. Check it out. Okay, turn it on. It's been about, I don't know, 12 hours or so. She's dry-ish. Well, it's staying together so far. Let me, uh, let me try and clean it up with a little bit of sanding. We'll see how it looks. It's pretty bad. Like the radius here is different than the radius here. They're all different. It's probably why they didn't do it the way I did it. I could pretty it up, I think, if I just kept sanding. I could put a laminated piece inside here. Um, I could also put some trim on the front of it, but more or less it's like, it was a fun experiment. First time I've done something this much turf cutting. <sighs> Mine turned out like shit. The, the video looks good, so I, I'll go out and I'll say, it. give this one a shot if you're into it. It's not that hard. It will take some practice, so do a couple tests first. Video's awesome. I think it deserves the views. My build does not deserve the views, so sorry for that. But let's go on to the next one. All right, up next, we've got 24.5 million views, and this is a finger joint. Really, really fun beginner joint that anyone can do. You need only a couple things, a table saw, and you're good to go. So. I guess let's get to it. All right, so this finger joint technique is relatively simple. You wanna make sure of a few things. One, you're using a ripping blade that has a flat bottom on it. That will make for a better looking joint, one. And two, you can get away with just using your good old fashioned miter gauge that comes with your table saw. So I'm gonna get this blade in, show you guys how to do this. Two, I'm gonna rip a two and a half inch piece. Ah, let's go three. And next, you're gonna wanna get your miter gauge, put it in the table. If you look on the back of your miter gauge, see these two slots here? If you didn't know, those are for screwing stuff to your miter gauge. You can simply just fasten this to your miter gauge, and there you go. Next, I've got some material here. I've got walnut and I got maple. You wanna set your blade height to be just a smidget above your material thickness, okay? That's important when you get into it. The next thing that I'll do is turn this on, Run this over it. 
Now that is gonna be where your key goes. So out of some scrap, you now wanna cut your key. I've got a little bit of walnut here, and I know that if I put my piece here and I mark it, I can line up my saw to hopefully make the off cut of what I'm pushing through fit into that key. It's still a little bit heavy. So as my daughter likes to say, try again. Now we have a perfect key. Okay, so cut these into little pieces now. Okay, so we've got our key. Now what I'm gonna do, a little bit of CA glue from the back to speed the process up. That convenience of the new miter table with that in there, superb. Just put that back. You're going to take the rest of the piece you have left over, bump it up against the saw blade with your key so there's a gap there, okay? Then you're gonna want to go ahead and screw your plate back in. All right, so for this first cut, I will start with my piece butted up against the key. So when you start the next piece, you wanna put your last one here, butt this against it. Remove, and then start your cuts. Super, super, super easy. And then, boom, there you go. That's how she fits together. A Little bit of glue, and that sucker is, oh, I went backwards there, but a little bit of glue, and that sucker is a beaut. It's a beaut, clog, it's a beaut. Really cool joint, super easy. Any beginner can use it. If you've got a table saw, you can make this joint. You don't need any crazy tools. I'll put some glue in there and show you guys what she looks like finished. And I gotta say, that is a good looking joint. Well worth it. You gotta give this one a shot. Super easy. Next up has 12.8 million views and I think it's a joinery piece, which we've done a ton of in this series. Oh yes. We've got Olaf Davidson. This guy is actually incredible. I've seen a bunch of his stuff. This is just so soothing. He's using a bunch of hand tools, creating a, oh snap. I've never seen that. It's like a lap joint with an X in it, then showing off some of his other super buttery joints. Let's try this X joint though. This thing looks pretty rad. So I've milled up some stock here. We've got a piece of oak and a piece of walnut. I use walnut and maple, but I don't have any chunky maple, I don't think. Okay, so I need to lay out some lines here. All right, so we'll just get a little cross line here. There's no points of reference on there, but our material here, three quarters of an inch to center. Before I do anything else, I'm actually gonna take my own advice and I'm gonna put blue tape right on the edge. You can still see my cut mark. The next thing we want to do is use a marking gauge. And our piece is one inch thick, so we want to go a half inch. That's perfectly centered. Great, I ruined my freaking triangle. So we're going to remove all of this, all of this, and all of that. And then it'll be the opposite on this guy. That triangle gets removed the whole way, and then this part here stays as well. So all of this, that gets removed, that gets removed that gets removed and the triangle gets removed. He uses hand tools, but I don't think he cuts the first part with hand tools. I think he just dials it in with hand tools. Yeah, he's got a little hand router there, dials that in. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm -hmm. We're gonna hybrid this sucker. Yeah, it's a hybrid. Or we'll do some table saw cuts and we'll do some cuts with the hand tools. We're not gonna fit these off the saw. I'll get them super close. The next thing, I have this line here that's gonna tell me the edge of my cut so I can line up the back and just give it a smidge inside to make it clean. Okay, so it's important on this one that I don't screw this up. As you can see, I have a cut line there. I just wanna transfer that all the way up. That way, when I'm lining it up to my cut here on the fence, I'm not screwing myself. That should leave me in with my triangle still existing. It's a good start. Let's go dial it in on the workbench. So I think the first thing I wanna do here is just relieve the cuts that are inside there. So we'll just start here. Uh -huh. 
pretty satisfying. And then come back through and start cleaning it up. So in his example, he did this. And so I'm just gonna take a little bit more of the meat off of those, and then I'll come back on the other side. And then he comes back with one of these, which is gonna be perfectly just like adhered to here. So a little double-sided tape. I'll just make sure this thing's perfect before putting it down right up to that line. Excellent. And then I'll come back through and just like he did, oak on the cross grain is not as nice as maple. Be able to use this as a backer. Okay, I'll take that. I'm gonna do the bottoms of both of those at the same time. I'm gonna have to do a little bit of tweaking once we get into it, but I think we should be good. So I'm gonna do the same thing here, but this time it's gonna be much smaller cuts. Because I don't have any throw on there. <laughs> Okie dokie. All right, so for this one, we're literally just going up and down, vertical. So I've got this big old block here. And then I'll come back in and clean up the, uh, the bottom. Okay, two things I typically don't do that I did exactly as the video said. Go me! Old-ass tools. I actually don't even know how old this is. I rarely use it. So this is a handheld router plane if you're not familiar. But you just kind of use it to do exactly this. You flatten the bottom of rabbits. And I would use it just like a palm router if I wanted to bust out my palm router. Pretty cool tool. I can come back in and I'll clean it up with my chisel. To avoid tear out, you want to come from the outside in. It's pretty darn close. I think I got a little out of square with this part here. I'm trying to do it the way he did it. That tape might actually be it. Okay, so now it's seated. Too snug, but it'll go, so I'm gonna clean this one up. You don't see the inside of this joint, so I'm just gonna put a slight chamfer on it to help everything go and seat. That's also why I didn't care that we got tear out where we did. Okay, moment of truth. Tight. Oh, it's a tight joint. Okay, let's bust her out. Ain't as good as his, but it's in there. And she's seated. That's a, to be it's as simple as it is. That is a tough joint. It looks pretty good. I mean, I could, if I sanded it, it would look a lot, a lot better. Um, there's a little bit of gap there and it's not perfectly seated here, um, but uh, you know, Awesome stuff. That dude is an absolute beast in the shop. Highly recommend his channel. Worth every single view. Good stuff. And that's gonna be a wrap on this one. A lot of woodworking here. This was a lot of fun though. Some cool stuff. I definitely suggest you guys give it a shot. Make sure you're following me on social. That way you can send me all the examples of ridiculous stuff like this you want me to try in the next video. And then leave a comment down below and let me know what are we gonna build next?